Hello and welcome back to Catch and Cook California. I'm Kevin. This is video number four in my new series, Mushroom Foraging for Beginners. In video number one, we explored chanterelles. In video number two, we learned how to identify and find porcinis. Video number three was on an assortment of bolites, including the butter bolete. And this time, we're headed out to learn how to identify and how to find oyster mushrooms. Let's go. Now, just before we start, once again, I have to emphasize that this series is supplemental. It's not enough to watch these videos, take what you've learned out to the woods and apply it to mushrooms. You need to be using a good book and I cannot recommend enough that you've got to go take formal training. Either come out with me or someone in your area who's teaching mushroom identification courses, or you can look up a local mycological society. I'm going to continue to teach the last of my mushroom identification courses here in the Bay Area. If you'd like to join those, the season is starting to peter out, so please do not delay. I'm also guiding crab snaring and a little bit of shallow water kayak crab hoop nets for Dungeness, as well as sea urchin and poke pulling the intertidal zone. I've also got some shallow water snorkel foraging, a great opportunity for new freedivers to learn the ropes, learn their gear, and stay in the shallow. Still get some delicious wild food, including mussels, native oysters, and even the occasional invasive green crab. So please join me. So what you can see right here, is a whole bunch of dead oyster mushrooms up on this tree. As I always say, the mycelium is basically the apple tree and the mushroom is the apple. In this case, the mycelium lives inside this tree, so it's between the outer bark and the wood itself. And often in these cracks and things, you'll see the mushroom, the fruit, the apple popping out. So even though these apples are now rotten, we know that the mycelium lives here, which means this tree will continue to fruit as long as this stays nice and damp, which it is. You can see that these guys have been turned to Swiss cheese. If you don't pick them, then that's what happens. Man, these guys were perfect. They just started getting some bugs on them. So sad. Just missed all these two. In a survival situation, no problem at all. It's just extra protein, it's not gonna hurt you. Just cook them. But these are definitely buggy. Too bad. All old. These, on the other hand, are in perfect shape. Now because of this persistent rain, we're going to take these even though they're pretty small, otherwise they're just going to rot like these guys right here. I just picked all of these, but I'm leaving all of those and there's more down there, so hopefully you find them. If you do, keep the spot quiet, keep it sustainable. Some really beautiful ones there. So you can see that some of these are much lighter, much smaller, some much darker capped, and quite a bit larger. Oyster mushrooms are really interesting because it's not just one species, but actually a collection of different species that phenotypically, the way that they look, their, their physical interaction with the environment is nearly identical, with subtle differences. But they're close enough that you can use the same flow chart, the same key, to identify them. I recommend Mushrooms Demystified and All That the Rain Promises and More by David Aurora. So let's talk about some of these key features. With 100% certainty, they're going to be growing on wood. So either a standing live tree with a dead section where they'll be growing out of, or standing dead trees, or fallen logs. They have true gills like pages in a book. These are going to be thin-edged, unbranching, and the gills are going to run from the cap down onto the stem if the stem is present. The stem is short 
and off center if it's present at all. Again, those gills are going to run down from the cap onto the stem. They'll be growing in a shelf-like arrangement. So think of bookshelves on your wall. And they're going to be growing on dead hardwoods. But when I'm looking for this coastal variant, which is a bit more delicate than the interior or central valley foothill variant of the oyster mushroom, these coastal variants, I tend to find them on tan oak, coast live oak, and in this case, alder. So the cap is medium size, at least two inches broad. At least when you're starting, if you only find little ones, just let them grow a little bit bigger. If you're not sure if it actually is an oyster or something that might be related, just let it get bigger. If it's at least two inches broad and bald, that's another key feature. It's not gonna have a bunch of fibers or hairs all over it. It's actually smooth. White, gray, dark gray, or brown. In this case, we've got a bit of a brown variant. In this case, sort of a lightish tan, almost white color. Gills are white or at least pale. Veil, ring, and vulva are gonna be absent. This is clearly not in the family Amanita. Remember that old rhyme? Not gonna eat a Amanita. And your spore print are gonna be white to lilac tinge. And if you're not sure, if you find these and they have not been through the rain, sometimes the top will actually drop spores onto the second cap. In this particular case, it went through the rain, so there's no spore print on it. All we've gotta do is we're gonna break this guy off when I get it home, because it's supposed to be white to lilac tinge, I'm gonna put this on a dark background. It could be a brown paper bag, could be a black background. I'll leave it gills side down, I'll put a coffee mug on it, and I'm just gonna let it sit there overnight. The next morning, I'm gonna move it, and we'll see if we get a spore print. So without a doubt, these are oyster mushrooms. I always say that uh, for beginner mushroom foragers, I highly recommend that you don't mess with gilled mushrooms with a few exceptions. One of those exceptions is the oyster mushroom, and the other exception are the chanterelle family, which we talked about in the very first video in this series. The reason I like the chanterelles is because of their primitive gills. The only chanterelle that can really get you in trouble is the scaly chanterelle, which is pretty obvious. If you're not sure about that, go back and check out that first video. The reason I like oyster mushrooms for this is there's very few things you could confuse it with. But real quickly, I wanna show you something that kind of looks somewhat similar. That's the jack-o'-lantern. You can see that it's orange, but it does grow in a shelf-like arrangement. Jack-o'-lanterns don't really look like oysters, but it's a warning that not everything growing on wood is gonna be safe to consume. All right, we got our oyster mushrooms. Now we're gonna go cook them up, but I wanna pair these mushrooms with another local delicacy. It's starting to rain a little bit. Dungeness crab. I got out with my dad on his boat the other day. We dropped a few of our hoop nets just before a storm came in. So we only had a couple hours, but uh, we got a few good Dungeness crab. I wanna roll some real quick footage of that, and then we'll meet back up in the outdoors and cook a little Dungeness crab and oyster mushroom feast. It does as much as you'd think, but it's got one. He's legal. Nice. Uh, one legal. One claw. Yeah, I All right, I'm gonna start off by sauteing these oyster mushrooms with some onions, some butter, some garlic, some salt and pepper. Now, I have the task of cracking all the crab. I've shown you this in previous videos, but what I like to do is Take that tip of that leg there, and I use that to extract the crab meat. Grab it, pull that whole piece out in one go. Nothing but empty shell there. All right, well, it wasn't one perfect piece, but it's one 
very nice piece. One of my favorite things about Dungeness specifically is just how much meat is in the body of the crab. I don't want to talk up SF too much, but sourdough bread, that's another one of those classic SF favorites. Bay Area makes sourdough very, very well. As soon as I flip it, everything else is going back on. In goes the mushrooms and the crab. Look at that crab. Oh man, three types of cheese. I'm gonna do simple Monterey Jack. I'm gonna do some Gruyere and some Parmesan. Let's cover it up. Now let's let it do its thing. And we're gonna top it with some fresh cut chives. Check that out. <laughs> I made this last year for Diane and we both decided it was like the greatest thing, the simplest thing in the world, but so, so good. So uh, I'll have to make her one when she gets off work today. But first, taste test for you guys. And then I'm gonna go guide. Wow. That's bomb. <laughs> there is nothing about this that I don't love. The oyster mushrooms have such a nice texture. Very chewy, um, earthy. You know, it's subtle as a mushroom compared to the oyster mushrooms that grow in the interior, like uh, on the cottonwoods in the California Central Valley. But even though it's subtle, it has incredible flavor. This is a really, really tasty mushroom. And one of my favorite things about it is it grows the whole season from the very beginning, from the first rainfall to the very end, you can find these mushrooms on the coast. As far as the Dungeness is concerned, I mean, that crab is the sweetest crab we have on the coast. It is just so freaking good. And so much meat in a single crab. I love it. Mm. Mm. Now that's a meal. <laughs> I'm gonna finish this bad boy off and I'm gonna enjoy every bite. If you're in the Bay Area and you're interested in coming out foraging, remember I am guiding intertidal foraging for rock crab, eels, mussels. I guide clamming, uh, foraging for sea urchin, hook and line fishing from shore. I've just started guiding some crab snaring as well as dropping hoop nets from kayaks. Free dive spear fishing season should pick up here in about a month as the ocean kind of calms down. And in the meantime, I'll be teaching mushroom identification courses, the last of the season. Well, I hope you learned something in this video. I hope you're enjoying this series. Please like, subscribe, share the video, and until next time, keep the old ways alive. Man, I know they say rice aroni is the San Francisco treat, but I'm pretty sure it's Dungeness Crab. <laughs> <laughs>